Hi friends, in this video let's talk about which rice is the healthiest. The answer you will see is not so simple as just picking brown rice or white rice or short or long grained. In fact, how you prepare your rice, whether you pre-soak it in water, how you eat it, whether or not you eat it cold or hot, or even if you should eat leftover rice, and what you are eating with your rice, such as proteins and fats, can impact how healthy your rice is to your body. Today, you are going to learn how to pick rice, how to best prepare rice, how to eat rice so it has less of an impact on your blood sugar and possibly help you lose weight. Yes, physicians use rice to cure people of diabetes and obesity. Sounds impossible, right? But I will explain why it is very possible. But before you chow down on that bowl of rice, you should know that all rice has arsenic. But you will learn which country and which brand has the least amount of arsenic. And I will show you how to reduce at least 50% of the arsenic in any rice on the market. Now, many people avoid rice because it increases blood sugars. Foods that increase blood sugars have a glycemic index. And you can download apps and buy books such as The Calorie King to tell you this number on a lot of different foods. Rice has a high glycemic index. This means your blood sugar will go up by a lot. So here's my first tip to make rice healthier and to lower your glycemic index. Refrigerate cooked rice for 24 hours and then heat it up and eat it. Refrigerated rice can lower the blood sugar load by 30 to 30%. So it is healthier to not eat fresh rice out of the pot. Now, how does this work? It's simply chemistry. Your kitchen is a chemistry lab. And when you add heat or cold to food, you actually change the chemistry of the food. Now you will notice cold rice is hard and warm rice is soft. All rice is made out of two types of carbohydrates, amylose and amylopectin. Now the reason why you need to know this is because different rice contains different amounts of amylose and amylopectin. Amylopectin is basically a chain of sugars that will raise your blood sugar. Now your body cannot digest amylose and when you cool the rice, amylose binds to the amylopectin, a process called retrogradation, and that prevents you from absorbing the amylopectin. The new molecule is essentially resistant starch, similar to what's in a green banana. Resistant starch acts like fiber, which does not raise your blood sugar. Just as a reminder, properly storing rice is super important to not get food poisoning. Raw rice has a bacteria called Bacillus cereus, and Bacillus cereus makes spores, which are bacteria seeds. Cooking and heat does not kill the spores. And when you warm up your rice on the countertop or in the sun when you're on a picnic, you're basically growing bacteria. And you can get really sick within 30 minutes and vomit. So don't reheat your rice more than once and refrigerate your rice within an hour after cooking it. And if you have any excess over a day, that really needs to go in the freezer. So which is a healthier, long or short grain rice? Which type raises your blood sugars more? There are over 40,000 varieties of rice. Rice is a grass called Orza sativa. And there's actually 90,000 species stored in the International Rice Bank. That's a ton of rice. But there are really two groups of rice that you need to know. And that's based on how long and wide the grain is. Long grain rice is called indica. It looks longer than it is wide, so tall and thin. And medium or short grain rice is called japonica. It looks wider than it is long, so short and stubby. These grains have different textures because they have different starches. Long grain rice has more amylose and short grain rice has more amylopectin. And remember, amylose doesn't raise your blood sugar, whereas amylopectin does raise your blood sugar. So short grain rice is less healthy in terms of your metabolism than long grain rice. So if you guess long grain rice is better for your blood sugar, you are correct. I like long grain rice like basmati and jasmine, not only because they have a lower glycemic index, but also because they stay separate and fluffy. But you know, if you eat stickier rice or known as sushi rice, then it's gonna stick together more and raise your blood sugar higher. Remember stickier just means higher blood sugar. Now everyone should want normal 
glucose, blood sugars, whether you have diabetes or not, because high sugars damage your blood vessels and cause inflammation. Normal glucose is between 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter when you are fasting. So if your fasting glucose is above that, you have impaired glucose metabolism. Simply put, you are pre-diabetic or diabetic. And the problem is sugar and water get sticky and your blood is mostly water. So you can imagine when you get sugar in it, that sugary, sticky water starts to kick on your blood vessels, making it inflamed. Inflammation makes your immune cells attack your blood vessels. And that's really bad. Over time, for years and decades, you basically are destroying tissue. And literally, blood is life. So it is everyone's best interest to have good blood sugar, especially in children and as adults, right? Because you want to preserve your blood flow. And you can measure the amount of inflammation that the sugar is causing by a test called hemoglobin A1C. Now, everyone should have a hemoglobin A1C done annually. Many people decide to eat better right before they see their doctor. That's great, but just know this test will not change. It is a marker about how well your sugars are controlled over the last three months. And ideally, this level should be 5.7, but it really depends on a lot of factors. So please see your own doctor to get that ideal number for you. So is it even safe for diabetics to eat rice? The answer is more complex than yes or no. But if I were to give you one answer, that would be yes, but with qualifications. And it depends on how much you're eating and what else you're eating with it. So let me explain why this is confusing. Many internet influencers and really healthcare professionals think rice is bad because it's loaded with carbohydrates and that elevates your blood sugar. And remember, amylopectin is basically sugar, but elevated blood sugar is a symptom of the problem and not the cause of the problem, which is diabetes. Just like fever is a symptom of an infection and not the cause of the infection. If you lower your fever with a medication, you're really not treating the root cause which is the germ. Likewise, by lowering your blood sugar levels with medication or by avoiding whole grain rice and other healthy carbohydrates, you are not treating the root cause of the problem, which is insulin. Now, insulin is a essential hormone that you need to live. And if you don't have insulin, you're not gonna live very long and you're not gonna grow. If you have too much insulin, you basically grow too big and you can even get obese because insulin makes your fat cells store more fat. So people with type 1 diabetes, they're missing insulin, but that's not what most people have. And type 1 diabetics, when they first get diagnosed, they're actually losing weight. For people with type 2 diabetes, they have the opposite problem and are insulin resistant. And that is really the majority of people. They're usually gaining weight and overweight. But a type 1 diabetic, after they go on insulin, can develop insulin resistance, and that's when they are overweight. Now, you may be wondering, what does insulin resistance mean? Insulin is like a doorbell ringer. When you have insulin, it rings your muscle cells, and your muscles open the doors to allow sugar from your blood to go inside. This is protective. But when your muscle cells have too much fat, it ignores insulin and then more insulin needs to come along, pound on your muscles to get it to take the sugar out of your blood. And this is why you should have a fasting insulin level checked because you can have normal hemoglobin A1C and have an elevated insulin level. And if your insulin level is above 10, you're either pre-diabetic or have type two diabetes. Many people think by eating less carbohydrates or totally avoiding all carbohydrates like the ketogenic diet, that they can improve their insulin resistance. Now, that is partially true because when you go on a diet, you generally will lose weight. And when you lose weight, no matter how you lose weight, whether you're eating or not, you will lower your insulin requirements. However, weight loss does not mean you are healthy, nor have you solved the problem of insulin resistance. Let's say you don't eat, you will lose weight first by digesting your own muscle tissue. You will have muscle loss. That's obviously not what people want to do. And you're basically trading one problem for another. And on top of that, you haven't solved the insulin resistance problem. 
So low carbohydrate or ketogenic dieters, they actually lose muscle mass. And you can actually measure this on yourself if you're gonna start that ketogenic diet by recording what your calf muscle size is with the tape measure. And then when you're on the diet, watch it shrink. That is not what you wanna do. What you need to shrink is your belly fat not your muscle. And it is well known and documented that when you get off a ketogenic diet and you eat some carbohydrates, you will have massive rises in glucose levels because you are very insulin resistant. But when you're on a ketogenic diet, because you don't eat any sugar or carbohydrate, you won't see any sugar levels. As I mentioned before, not all carbohydrates increase your insulin, like amylose and resistant starch. And any diet plan should include a plan for longevity. And that means you need to pay attention to getting enough vitamins and other tiny nutrients called micronutrients. And when you avoid healthy whole plant carbohydrates, you simply won't get the thousands of micronutrients that are vital to reduce inflammation. So how do you lose weight on a rice diet? And is it even possible? Let me give you an example in history of how rice cured obesity and diabetes. In the 1940s, a professor named Walter Kepner from Duke University, a very prestigious university in America, put obese and diabetic patients on a white rice and fruit diet and cured their obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Now, it was a high carb, low calorie, low protein and low fat diet. That means they had portion control, which is the key to any diet. Now at that time, there were no blood pressure, diabetes, or obesity medications. They used food as medicine. His patients proved that rice does not cause diabetes nor obesity, unlike what you may have heard. And rice is eaten by billions of people around the globe. 90% of the world's rice is from Asia. So to simply think that white rice is responsible for the rate of diabetes and obesity in America is misguided. Obesity levels have been climbing in America since the 1970s, but consumption of rice hasn't really changed. Also, Asians in Asia have been eating rice since 7,000 BC in China, and until the 1990s, obesity wasn't much of a problem in Asia. Don't do this diet. The rice diet is not a longevity diet. You will be missing lots of vital nutrients if you eat like that. And you're gonna get yourself sick if you don't supplement properly. So if it's not rice, then why are people getting diabetic and obese? The answer is fat. Your body is storing too much fat and preventing your muscles from absorbing the sugars that you eat. And there are several ways to get this fat clogged up. You can eat a lot of pure fat like butter or olive oil or drink a lot of alcohol. You can eat a lot of protein, but most proteins come with fat. Animal proteins, even lean chicken breasts, are 20% fat. But a lot of people eat bacon, and that's really mostly fat. And when you eat a lot of protein and fat, you become insulin resistant. And then when you eat any carbohydrate, you will see high blood sugars, which, you know, if the muscle doesn't take it in, it has to be stored in fat cells. And so your fat cells just start expanding and getting fatter. And hence you get the cycle of massive growth and weight gain. So this means rice and meat is a bad combination. The meat and fat flavorings make you more insulin resistant. So then when you do eat the rice, you basically will pack it on as fat. So try to eat your rice with low fat but high protein foods like beans and tofu. So which type of rice is the healthiest to eat, brown or white? I have here brown rice. And the answer is not so simple, but in order for you to understand why that's so, we have to know what's in a grain of rice. Outside you have the husk and then the bran, and if you remove the husk, you get brown rice. Essentially, a grain of rice is the seed of a plant. Rice, like all plants, have more than just carbohydrates. It has 7% complete protein and 1% fat. It is obviously not a high source of protein or fat. And looking at the picture of the rice, I'm sure you can figure out how they make white rice. And if you guess that they just shave the bran off, you are correct. This process is called refining the grain. And you can refine it even more by making rice into a powder. Then you have ultra processed food. And that is a worse type of rice to eat. So gluten-free bread and desserts like Rice Krispies are both ultra processed foods and will raise your blood sugar 
And if you guess that brown rice is healthier for you, well, that's not necessarily true. Let me first tell you the perks of brown rice though. Brown rice has much more fiber, two to three times more than white rice. And remember, fiber is protective from sugar spikes. Brown rice has many more micronutrients, which include essential vitamins for human health, such as vitamin D1 thiamine. But it also has a lot of other micronutrients called polyphenols that reduce inflammation. That part of brown rice is excellent for your health. In fact, removing the rice bran and eating white rice actually killed millions of people around the world at one time. Have you heard of beriberi? A disease in Indonesia or akake in Japan or perneus in Brazil or I think it's called malade jambe in Louisiana? These are different names describing the same disease called polyneuritis, which is inflammation of the nerves as well as the heart. People liken the devastation to being second only to smallpox. And during those days, everything bad was blamed on a germ. And they tried hunting for a germ, but they ended up finding that the cause was a tiny little vitamin called Thiamine, vitamin B1. And you need to know this because vitamin B1 is essential for you to make energy in every cell in your body. And unfortunately, your body cannot make vitamin B1 and it cannot store vitamin B1. The kicker is the more carbohydrates you eat, the more vitamin B1 you actually need. So if you're drinking sugar water like soda or juice, there is no vitamin B1 in it. So you're using up whatever vitamin B1 is in your system from your daily food. And this partially explains why people feel the low energy after a sugar bolus. And it wasn't until the 1900s that scientists figured out rice bran contained vitamin B1. And you know how they figured that out? Pigeons. Pigeons were also dying of neuritis when they ate white rice. But when they gave them rice bran, they were cured. Today, white rice is sprayed with vitamin B1 to prevent this devastating disease. But I still see people with vitamin B1 deficiency or inadequacy. And this happens to people who have absorption issues or they're just simply not eating well. And let me tell you, if you are low in thiamine, you will be tired all the time, you won't be able to think properly, and you put yourself at risk for heart failure, cataracts, dementia, and depression, you're simply gonna feel bad every day. So to answer the question between brown rice and white rice, on a nutritional level, brown rice is definitely healthier. But brown rice has 80% more arsenic than white rice. Yes, I know, that's another complication. Unfortunately, rice just absorbs 10 times more arsenic than any other grain. And because of this, you just can't buy any rice on the market. Arsenic not only causes cancer by damaging your DNA, it can suppress your immunity and make you more insulin resistant. There is really no acceptable level of arsenic in our food and water, period. But unfortunately, our government allows arsenic in all our foods, including baby foods and juices. So guess what country has the highest arsenic concentrations in their rice? We do, the USA but not in California. So California grown rice is one of the lowest arsenic concentrations in the world. And Lungberg is a brand that will actually report their arsenic concentration. And it is much lower than other brands. You can also refer to consumer reports. They tested so many variety of rice and they found out that white basmati rice from California, India, and Pakistan, and sushi rice or cowrels rice from the US on the average had half as much arsenic as most other brands. And by the way, organic rice doesn't make a difference. So rinsing your rice can remove 10% of the arsenic. So yes, soak and rinse your rice before you cook it. Just know that when you are soaking and rinsing, you're essentially throwing out the baby, in this example, the vitamin B1, with the bath water because vitamin B1 is a water soluble vitamin. But you can easily supplement. It's more important not to eat arsenic. And when you cook your rice, if you cook one cup of rice, use six cups of water and then dump the water and then you can heat it to whatever dryness you want. This removes an additional 40 to 60% of the arsenic. The bottom line is it is okay to eat rice even as a diabetic, but limit your servings to two to three times a week because of the arsenic in the rice. Eat both brown and white rice 
and you want to eat rice with low-fat foods. Now, if you like this video, you'll love the next one too.